हेलो स्टूडेंट्स अज की क्लास में थोड़ा स्वागत है कि तुम जानते हो कि स्टोक्योमैट्री की होंगी है स्टोक्योमैट्रिक कैलकुलेशन की होंगे हैं वर्ड स्टैक्योमैट्री दो ग्रीक वर्ड्स स्टोक्योन मैट्रोन तो आया है वर्ड स्टोक्योन का मतलब है एलीमेंट अते वर्ड मैट्रोन तो भाव है मेजर इन दिस वे वी कैन से दैट स्टैक्योमैट्री डील्स विद द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ मासस ऑफ द रिएक्टेंट्स एंड प्रोडक्ट्स इन्वॉल्व इन अ कैमिकल रिएक्शन इट गिवस क्वानिटेटिव रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द वेरियस रिएक्टेंट्स एंड प्रोडक्ट्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ मोल्स मासस molecules and volume before continuing our discussion on it let's have a look at the learning objectives upon completion of this topic learners will be able to recall stoichiometric calculations discuss balancing chemical equations discuss hit and trial method recall the definition of limiting reagent solve numerical problems define mass percentage mole fraction molarity of solution and molality balancing chemical equations Balancing of a chemical equation means to equalize the atoms of different elements or compounds which are involved in it. As per law of conservation of mass, we know that mass of a closed system will remain constant over time regardless of the processes acting inside the system. If we apply this law on the chemical equations, we can say that a balanced chemical equation has the same number of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation let's begin our discussion with an unbalanced reaction phosphorus reacts with oxygen to form phosphorus oxide p4 plus o2 gives p4 o10 on the left hand side number of phosphorus atoms are equal to 4 number of oxygen atoms are equal to 2 on the right hand side number of phosphorus atoms are equal to 4 number of oxygen atoms are equal to 10 it shows that number of phosphorus atoms are same on both sides it is equal to 4 as discussed but number of oxygen atoms is not equal on both sides to balance number of oxygen on the left hand side it is multiplied by 5 we get p4 plus 5o2 gives p4 o10 now again let's calculate the number of phosphorus and oxygen atoms on both sides on the left hand side number of phosphorus atoms equal to 4 number of oxygen atoms equal to 10 on the right hand side number of phosphorus atoms are equal to 4 number of oxygen atoms are equal to 10 this means that this is a balanced chemical equation hit and trial method students ki tusi jande ho ki assi hit and trial method nal chemical equations nu kive balance karde ha aao janiye in this method we apply few rules for balancing a chemical equation let's discuss them one by one the symbol and formulae of the reactants and the products are written 
first in the form of an equation. After this, next step is checked. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, etc. are elementary gases. If any of these gases are present in chemical equations, these are first changed into their atomic form. In the next step, the formula containing maximum number of atoms is selected. This formula is used for equalization of atoms on both sides. In the next step, the number of atoms present in the formula is then balanced by suitably multiplying the other formulae containing those atoms. In case the hit and trial method is not convenient, that is, if the reaction is not balanced, then first we balance atoms appearing minimum number of times. At last, we balance atoms appearing maximum number of times. The last step for balancing chemical equations is to balance the atoms of elementary gas. The chemical equation is now changed from atomic form to molecular form. Finally, we get a balanced chemical equation. Let's take an example. Let us balance the equation shown on the screen. KMNO4 plus HCl gives KCl plus MnCl2 plus H2O plus Cl2. As chlorine gas is present as a product in the shown chemical reaction, let us change it into atomic state. KMnO4 plus HCl gives KCl plus MnCl2 plus H2O plus Cl. Now, let's start with potassium permanganate that is KMnO4. We find that number of K and Mn are same on both sides. Let's balance oxygen atom as shown on the screen by multiplying H2O by 4. KMnO4 plus HCl gives KCl plus MnCl2 plus 4H2O plus Cl. Let's balance hydrogen atoms by multiplying HCl by 8. KMnO4 plus 8HCl gives KCl plus MnCl2 plus 4H2O plus Cl. Now, to balance chlorine atoms, multiply Cl by 6. We get equation as shown on the screen. KMnO4 plus 8HCl gives KCl plus MnCl2 plus 4H2O plus 6Cl. Now, the shown equation is in atomic form. Let's multiply it by 2. Finally, we get reaction shown on the screen. 2 KMnO4 plus 16 HCl gives 2 KCl plus 2 MnCl2 plus 8 H2O plus 6 Cl2. Now, this is a balanced equation. Children, let us now learn about limiting reactant or limiting reagent. Students, we will try to understand limiting reactant with the help of an example. That is, combustion of methane in air. Let's assume that 
the combustion of 20 moles of methane takes place in air. Let's have a look at the balanced chemical equation of the combustion of methane in air. 1 mole of methane reacts with 2 moles of oxygen to give 1 mole of carbon dioxide and 2 moles of water. So, we can say that the combustion of 20 moles of methane will require 40 moles of oxygen. Since the excess amount of oxygen available in air is more than the stoichiometric amount, hence it is called as an excess reactant. While methane is available as only 20 moles, it remains present in a limited amount and hence methane is called as limiting reagent here. It limits the participation of oxygen and formation of products of the chemical reaction. Let us take one more example, cooking gas. LPG is filled in the cooking gas cylinders which helps in burning. It is a mixture of liquefied propane and butane. This gas comes out of the nozzle of the gas cylinder and helps in burning in presence of atmospheric oxygen. When gas cylinder becomes empty, the gas does not burn anymore, though oxygen is still available in excess. It happens because propane and butane are no longer available. So, propane and butane act as limiting reactants. Let us pick one more example to clear the concept. One mole of nitrogen always reacts with three moles of hydrogen to produce two moles of ammonia. Here nitrogen and hydrogen act as reactants. If any of the reactants is taken in excess then the stoichiometric amount is left unreacted. Let us take this chemical reaction in a different way. What will happen if one mole of nitrogen reacts with 4 moles of hydrogen. Case 1. Ki hovega jadon nitrogen da ik mole hydrogen de 4 moles nal react karda hai. In the chemical reaction shown on the screen, 1 mole of nitrogen and 4 moles of hydrogen react to form 2 moles of ammonia and 1 mole of hydrogen. N2 plus 4H2 gives 2NH3 plus H2. In this case, 1 mole of hydrogen will be left unreacted and 2 moles of ammonia will be produced. Let us consider a different situation. Case 2 Let's have a look at the chemical reaction in which 2 moles of nitrogen and 3 moles of hydrogen react to form 2 moles of ammonia and 1 mole of nitrogen. 2N2 plus 3H2 gives 2NH3 plus N2. Here, 1 mole of nitrogen will be left unreacted and 2 moles of ammonia will be produced. Students, in the examples which we have discussed right now, in case 1, hydrogen is taken in excess and is left behind. 1 mole of nitrogen gets completely consumed. In case 1, Nitrogen is the limiting reagent, whereas in case 2, nitrogen is taken in excess and is left behind. 3 moles of hydrogen gets completely consumed. Therefore, in case 2, hydrogen is the limiting reagent. Students, can you tell me the conclusion of these two cases? On the basis of above example, it may be concluded that the amount of products formed in a chemical reaction are decided by the substance 
which is consumed completely in the chemical reaction. What does it mean? Students, such a substance is called a limiting reagent. It may be defined as a limiting reagent is the one of the reactants which is present lesser than stoichiometric amount and gets completely consumed in the chemical reaction under consideration and whose amount limits the participation of the other reactant in the chemical reaction and also the formation of product in the chemical reaction. The concept of limiting reagent is useful in stoichiometric calculations. Let us discuss about mass percentage first. Mass percentage. It is the mass of the component per 100 grams of solution. It is expressed as shown on the screen. Mass percentage of component is equal to the mass of the component in the solution divided by total mass of the solution multiplied by 100. Let us take an example of it. When we say 20% solution of sodium bicarbonate by mass, it means 20 grams of sodium bicarbonate are present in 100 grams of the solution. Mass percentage is studied in two types of solutions, solids in liquids and liquids in liquids. When we dissolve a fixed amount of solid into a fixed volume of solvent to form a solution, these are known as solids in liquids. Let us clear the concept with the help of an example. Example, 10% solution of sodium carbonate in 100 grams of solution. To get a solution of 100 grams, we need to add 10 grams of sodium carbonate into 90 milliliters of water. Do you know what happens when we add a fixed amount of liquid into a fixed volume of solvent? Let us discuss with the help of an example. It can be obtained by adding an alcohol into a fixed amount of solvent. It is known as liquids in liquids. Let us take one more example to understand it better. Example. 10% solution of ethyl alcohol in water, 10 milliliters of ethyl alcohol is dissolved in 90 milliliters of water to make a solution of 100 milliliters. Let us continue our discussion with the formula of mass percentage of the solute as shown on the screen. Mass percentage of the solute is equal to mass of the solute in the solution divided by total mass of the solution multiplied by 100 or it can also be written as mass percentage of the solute is equal to mass of the solute in the solution divided by mass of the solute plus mass of the solvent multiplied by 100 mole fraction Students, do you know what is mole fraction? Let's try to define it. Mole fraction is the ratio of the number of moles of one component to the total number of moles of the solution. Total numbers of moles are having number of moles of solute plus number of moles of solvent. It is expressed as shown here Mole fraction of a component is equal to number of moles of the component divided by total number of moles of all components. Students, how hun tuadi knowledge check kariye. Let us suppose a solution is made up of a solute A and solvent B. N A represents the number of moles of solute and N B represents the number of moles of solvent. Students, can you write a formula to calculate the mole fraction of solute? If we represent mole fraction of a solute as chi A, then mole fraction of solute 
दैट इज काई ए इज इक्वल टू नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ सॉल्यूट दैट इज एन ए डिवाइडेड बाई नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ सॉल्यूट दैट इज एन ए प्लस नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ सॉल्वेंट दैट इज एन बी इट कैन बी रिटन एज काई ए इक्वल टू एन ए अपॉन एन ए प्लस एन बी स्टूडेंट्स कैन यू राइट फॉर्मूला टू कैलकुलेट द मोल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ द सॉल्वेंट एज वी नो द मोल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ द सॉल्वेंट दैट इज काई बी इज इक्वल टू नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ द सॉल्वेंट दैट इज एन बी डिवाइडेड बाई नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ सॉल्यूट दैट इज एन ए प्लस नंबर ऑफ मोल्स ऑफ द सॉल्वेंट दैट इज एन बी वी कैन राइट इट एज काई बी इक्वल टू एन बी डिवाइडेड बाई एन ए प्लस एन बी इन द शोन फॉर्मूला काई बी रिप्रेजेंट्स द मोल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ सॉल्वेंट then we can say that the mole fraction of solvent that is chi b is equal to number of moles of the solvent that is n b divided by number of moles of the solute that is n a plus number of moles of the solvent that is n b मोल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ सॉल्यूट प्लस मोल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ सॉल्वेंट इज इक्वल टू वन काई ए प्लस काई बी इक्वल टू एन ए अपॉन एन ए प्लस एन बी प्लस एन बी अपॉन एन ए प्लस एन बी विच इज इक्वल टू वन वी कैन ऑल्सो राइट इट एज Chi A is equal to one minus Chi B, or Chi B is equal to one minus Chi A. Molarity of solution. Molarity of solution is the number of moles of solute dissolved in one liter of the solution. It is represented by m. Let us take an example to clear it. If we say one gram mole of the solute is dissolved in one liter of the solution, it means that molarity of the solution is one. Let us discuss molarity with the help of an example. Let's calculate molar mass of sodium carbonate. Gram atomic mass of sodium is twenty three grams. Gram atomic mass of carbon is twelve grams, and gram atomic mass of oxygen is sixteen grams. Molar mass of sodium carbonate is equal to two multiplied by atomic mass of sodium plus atomic mass of carbon plus three multiplied by atomic mass of oxygen on placing values of atomic masses of sodium carbon and oxygen in it we get molar mass of sodium carbonate is equal to 2 multiplied by 23 plus 12 plus 3 multiplied by 16 on solving it we get 46 plus 12 plus 48, which is equal to 106 grams. In the same manner, students, you can try to calculate molar masses of other compounds too. If we talk about one molar sodium carbonate solution, means 106 grams of solute or component. are present in 1 liter of solution there so it is expressed as molarity is equal to moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liters 
which is again equal to moles of solute divided by volume of solution in milliliter or centimeter cube multiplied by 1000. Students, what is the relation between liter and milliliter? Let us recall it. Yes, 1 liter is equal to 1000 milliliter. Molality. What is molality? Let us try to define it. Molality is the number of moles of solute dissolved per 1000 grams or 1 kilogram of solvent. It is expressed as molality is shown by the symbol M. Molality is equal to moles of solute divided by mass of solvent in kilogram which is equal to moles of solute divided by mass of solvent in grams which is multiplied by 1000. Its unit is mole per kilogram. Students, let us suppose small n represents the mole of solute and capital W represents the weight of solvent in grams. Molality can be expressed as small m is equal to small n divided by capital W multiplied by 1000. Now, hun este beste kuch numerical problems kariye. Zinc in solid state reacts with two molecules of HCl in aqueous state to give zinc chloride in aqueous state plus hydrogen in gaseous state. Solid zinc and aqueous hydrochloric acid react to form aqueous zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. If 0 0.30 moles of zinc is added to hydrochloric acid containing 0 0.52 moles of hydrochloric acid that is HCl, how many moles of hydrogen are produced? Solution. In this reaction, one mole of zinc reacts with two moles of hydrochloric acid. 0 0.30 moles of zinc will react with 2 multiplied by 0 0.30 which is equal to 0 0.60 moles of hydrochloric acid. But we have only 0 0.52 moles of hydrochloric acid. Hence, zinc cannot react completely and hence it is not a limiting reactant. Again, 2 moles of hydrochloric acid react with zinc which is equal to 1 mole. 1 mole of hydrochloric acid reacts with zinc is equal to 1 upon 2 mole. 0 0.52 moles of hydrochloric acid will react with zinc is equal to 1 upon 2 multiplied by 0 0.52 which is again equal to 0 0.26 moles. As we have 0 0.30 moles of zinc, therefore hydrochloric acid will react completely that is HCl is the limiting reactant. We can also say it as 2 moles of HCl that is hydrochloric acid is the limiting reactant. 2 moles of hydrochloric acid on reacting with zinc produce hydrogen gas equal to 1 mole. 0 0.52 moles of hydrochloric acid will produce hydrogen which is equal to 1 upon 2 multiplied by 0 0.52 moles which is equal to 0 0.26 moles. Next question is 3 grams of hydrogen react with 29 grams of oxygen to form water which is the limiting reactant. Calculate the maximum amount of water that can be formed. Calculate the amount of reactant left 
unreacted molecular mass of hydrogen is equal to 2.016 grams and the solution is 2 moles of hydrogen react with 1 mole of oxygen to form 2 moles of water. Gram atomic mass of hydrogen is 1.008 grams. Gram atomic mass of oxygen is 16 grams. With the help of atomic masses of hydrogen and oxygen, we can calculate molecular masses of water molecules. Molecular mass of water molecules are 36.032 grams. The amount of oxygen required by 3 grams of hydrogen is equal to 32 divided by 4.032 multiplied by 3 which is equal to 23.8 grams of oxygen. Thus, oxygen that is 29 grams is present in excess. Hence, hydrogen is the limiting reactant. Water formed is equal to 36.032 divided by 4.032 multiplied by 3 grams which is equal to 26.8 grams. Maximum amount of water formed is 26.8 grams. The amount of oxygen left unreacted is equal to 29 grams minus 23.8 grams which is equal to 5.2 grams. Next question is A reacts with B2 to form AB2. In the shown reaction mixtures, identify the limiting reagent if any. 300 atoms of A plus 200 molecules of B. 2. 2 mole of A plus 3 mole of B. 3. 100 atoms of A plus 100 molecules of B. 4. 5 moles of A plus 2.5 moles of B. 5. 2.5 moles of A plus 5 moles of B. First, according to the given chemical reaction, one atom of A reacts with one molecule of B. So, 200 molecules of B will react with 200 atoms of A and 100 atoms of A will be left unreacted. Hence, B is the limiting reagent while A is the reagent in excess. 2. According to the given reaction, one mole of A reacts with one mole of B. So, two moles of A will react with two moles of B. Hence, A is the limiting reagent. 3. As 100 molecules of B will react with 100 atoms of A. Hence, no limiting reagent is present here. 4. 2.5 moles of B will react with 2.5 moles of A. Hence, B is the limiting reagent. 5. 2.5 moles of A will react with 2.5 moles of B. Hence, A is the limiting reagent. My first question is, what is limiting reactant? And the answer is, the limiting reagent is the one of the reactants which is present in lesser amount than the other reactant as required according to the balanced equation and gets completely consumed in the chemical reaction. It also limits the formation of product and participation of the other reactant in the reaction. My next question is, Try to find limiting reagents 
in the shown chemical reaction and the answer is one mole of nitrogen gets completely consumed for that reason in this case nitrogen is the limiting reagent now my next question is try to find limiting reagents in the shown chemical reaction and the answer is 3 moles of hydrogen gets completely consumed therefore hydrogen is the limiting reagent students i hope that you have learned the concept of limiting reagent and you can solve numerical problems based on it see you in the next class thank you